I've worked on various projects over the years that have gone through rewrites, whether we're rewriting from JavaScript to TypeScript, or we're switching out a UI library such as Bootstrap or Material for something like Tailwind. Now, one of the hardest things to keep track of when you're doing something like this is your unused files. So you could have your unused files, you can have your unused dependencies as well, and also your exports that aren't being used. So you may have a file which has some functions that are being used, but one of them isn't being used anymore. And it's really hard to keep track of and know whether you should be able to delete this. And it's quite scary to go in and delete some of these dependencies to know whether it's gonna have knock-on effects on your application. Today, I wanna show you a really cool tool that helps you with all of these, and it's called Nip. So what I'm gonna do here is go ahead and run it. Now, what I've got here is an example project, which was from one of my latest YouTube videos. But what I've done is I've duplicated some components. So we have some unused components and I've also installed some dependencies that we're not using. So I've installed Material UI and I've also used React Query as I was doing some playing around in here and some testing with it, but then I didn't actually end up using it. So it's an unused dependency, but I didn't delete it. Now what you'll see here is I've run nip and it showed us that we have some unused files shows us that we have some unused dependencies, some unused dev dependencies, some unused exports as well. So as I mentioned, it's gonna show you, even though we're using this search component, we're using the input as well, but the input is being used within this file. So the export isn't actually needed. And it even picks up on that TypeScript interface being exported as well, which again, isn't being used anywhere else in my application. So it's just a really cool tool to help keep your projects clean. And it's highly configurable, which I'll show you in a minute. What we could do is we'll go ahead and delete these files so we don't need those old input, old search. And then we have that unused dependencies. We can go ahead and delete them from our package.json as well. We have the unused dev dependencies. So we'll delete that React color there and remark. And we'll go ahead and save that. And then with those unused exports as well, we can go ahead and get rid of the export in front of them. And now when I run nip again, hopefully it will report that there's been no issues found. As I said, this is a really handy way of keeping your project clean. And I highly recommend that even if you're not on a big project, you install this, you could even add it as part of your pipeline step to make sure that you're checking this all the time. And as I said, you wanna get started even using this on a new project, as it will make sure you don't get to a state or a bad state where you have to then delete loads of files or loads of exports, and it just keeps everything nice and clean and it makes you stay on top of it. So there we go, it says nip found no issues. So as I said, guys, what this is called is this is on nip.dev and you can get started. Now, there are two ways you can install this. You can install this within the application. So you install it as a dev dependency, whether you're using PMPM, NPM, Yarn or Bun. And then you can go ahead and add it as a script in your package.json as well. So you can always keep running that. Or you can do it the way that I just did it there to show you guys, which was essentially running without installation. So using NPX or PMPM's DLX or BunX. And that will just run it for you without installing it within your application. And as I said, it's going to spit out those unused dependencies for you. Now, one of the reasons I love Nip over some of its competitors that have come before, like Depth Check, is it just seems way more configurable than the previous examples. And it works a lot better with some other applications I have that use mono repos and different things like that. So it's highly configurable. You can come into the documentation here and see the configuration you can use. And it sort of relies on the entry files so it can go in and essentially view your application and see what files are being used and what dependencies aren't being used. And it even has a really cool one called production mode. Now essentially what this handles is when you have unused code, but it has a test written for it or a storybook story written for it, Previous tools may not report that as unused as it is actually being used somewhere, but using NIP's production mode, you can say this is where you should look for production code or my production files and anything that's being unused outside of that, let me know. So it will handle that and it will pick up if it's only being used sort of in a test or a storybook and it's not being used in your actual production code, it will report that as unused as well. Now, the way that it's all configured is that at the moment it comes with some built-in plugins as well, and you can even make your own, but these built-in plugins are enough to handle a lot of the use cases. As you'll see here, it has a Next.js one, which it would have used for me. So it's picked up that I have a Next dependency in my application and it's used that. And as I said, this comes with so many built-ins that it's gonna handle most of the cases that you already have. So it handles Vi, it handles Remix, handles other various applications, like just a TypeScript application. And it's just really handy. And as I said, it comes nice and configured for you, but it's extendable if you need to have your own custom configuration. 
It even has some other cool things such as it ties into your JS doc and TS doc tags. So if you have an export that's being unused by your application, but let's say it's, it's public, it will report that as not being unused. So it won't report it. So it knows that it's going to be used elsewhere as it's got that public tag on it. And it has various other tags on it. And the other really cool one that is experimental at the moment is that auto fix option. So at the moment, this is removing just the export keywords and the dependencies. It's not deleting files at the moment. But what we could do is I go ahead and put back what we discarded just there. And then I run nip here with the fix tag. You'll see that it will clean up this export for me. And it will also delete some stuff from my package.json for me. So once I go ahead and run that, you'll see there you go. It's removed that for me. Now, always make sure you're using version control when you do something like this, as you want to make sure that it doesn't delete anything that you can't get back and cause a headache. So make sure you do this with version control. And as I said, that feature is highly experimental, but I'm looking forward to what's coming from NIP. That's pretty much all I want to show you on this project. I hope you get started using it. If you have any questions, please leave a comment down below. And as always, please subscribe. Thank you very much for watching.